When you're dead. Come. No. Knock, knock. Who's there? It's Michonne. That's a boring bastard at the prison gate. Don't but... open your door. Don't open the gates. Michonne is here to bore you to fuck. Then that is it, guys. Michonne shows up at the door. In the prison, we are a bag full of kitty stuff looking like a nonce. <laughs> Still a pretty good Rick find for Rick, in my opinion, to see her. Like, you may spot her carrying the... Yeah, Rick, that uh, was his wee spec saver's test, but... But I tell you what, he was in no rush to save her here. Yeah, I mean, if Carl doesn't open the prison d- gates, Michonne probably dies here. Nice wee kinder Pro- there. Probably. Uh, does die, I mean, she passes it, and the zombies are about to get on her, like, and then Carl's like, nah, I'll do it. We get her inside... And then there's like a like a half an interrogation where Michonne says that two of their people has been kidnapped, and mentions them by name, they quickly put two and two together, right? And this is where the plot line thickens because Rick touches her leg, man, she makes it as if he's fucking raping her. I, 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 yeah, like a sexually fucking like um He wants to see if it's a bite or not. Fucking what the Don't you put your hands on me. Like, clearly outnumbered. Why is she acting this hostile? You know, acting tough as if she could do like, it. Why is she, why is she even bother coming up to the gate then? Maybe she knew. Maybe she knew the we- the group was weak because because Carol was missing. Oh, maybe, maybe that's maybe that is it. But yeah, like Michonne compl- overhears right that like the group, like Merle's got a brother, and that he was a part of the group who Andrew was a part of, and she knows that Glenn and Maggie were a part of that group too. But does not fucking mention it here in the slightest. Yeah, doesn't put two and two together. So, like, yeah. why like why not mention that when they're talking about like I know you could say oh she doesn't want to mention that because then they might not take vengeance against this group even though there's no real reason to take vengeance because they don't really know what's going on at this point they can't just go in and wipe out Woodbury at this point can they? well so, they try to like, I mean, well they do try to but there's not like tangible evidence to fucking go ahead and do it you don't like you know I mean I know I know like the, she saw like Merle take them both but I mean at the end of the day why doesn't Michonne mention it why I think it's pretty fucking stupid why she wouldn't I don't know. Because in my opinion, like, they're outnumbered. Woodbury's massive. And you've also got to look at the fact of, well, if they know it's his brother, they can maybe do a pace. Obviously the governor would never accept it, but they, they don't know that. Well, she does know, because she ever heard the conversation. So Michelle 100% knows. Hey, why doesn't she say anything? Speak up! I, I just think it's so the reveal. When yeah. they go in there, and Darrow and Meryl get the... the Bags taken off their heads and they see each other. It's like, holy shit! You no, know, it's a surprise. But yeah, no, realistically, Michonne should have mentioned. Oh, by the way, the the guy that kidnapped the the the, the, the hot girl and the, the Asian boy said that they said his brother was in your camp, and then do you know what I mean? and, and there's a guy <laughs> with one arm. It's, it's a sad guy. So I mean, fucking. I mean, it wants to say that. It, yeah, it just makes it doesn't make a lot of sense, but it is what it is. Anyway, we move to the Woodbury and uh, Merrill's interrogating Glenn, and I uh, knife beat, in the mouth. Pretty much beating the shit out of Glenn here. Glenn Sean is a tough little guy because he he's not giving up anything. Glenn headbutts Merrill. And um, Merrill pisses, pisses him off and he just throws a, a live zombie in with him and he's like, you're going to be a pretty uh, big meal for this guy. So uh, good luck. And closes the door and leaves Glenn, who's tied up to fight off a walker. He manages to do so, avoids a bite, avoids dying, then manages to break free and he lets out a little Asian scream. Why? Like, you could argue this is fair. Very... Right, it didn't sound like that, but you know, know. what I mean. That's, Dickhead tactics. That sounded better. Dickhead tactics for Merrill, but you can argue it's just karma. That's what they did to him. Yeah. Like, so you know, like I mean, I mean, it doesn't it doesn't make it right, but I mean, it's not like he's completely doing it at one hundred and twenty seven percent badness, is it? You know, at the same time, Glenn went, went actually went back and tried to get him. Like, so I did feel a bit sorry for Glenn here. Yeah, but also, is, are they not trying to overbook Glenn a bit here? The way he's like surviving a fucking torture scene from Merle. Not that Merle goes completely overboard with the torture scene. Like, oh, I just throws a fucking life walker in. I know, board. but it's not like he was snapping his kneecaps, chopping his fingers off, his fucking guys in his eye out, man. I mean, he kind of just like put a knife in his mouth, gave him a couple of punches, and that was it. I, I don't really believe though that he or like the governor would want Glenn dead. Yeah. The governor seems like to have all his, the cards available to play, and if Glenn's dead here, that could, you know, he's got no real advantage over Maggie, I guess, and whoever group they're with. So 
I mean, I mean storyline purposes here, I mean, if you lock someone in a room who's tied up with a walker, it probably means you want to kill him. But I don't think Meryl did want to kill him here. I, I think it was more like interrogating, but it would appear that he was trying to kill him. But I don't think that's the way they wrote it. Yeah, no, definitely. Like, we do see after this scene, like, we've got Martinez, Merle, and the governor outside discussing what to do next. Mm -hmm. And the governor's kind of like, well, why the fuck did you do that? Yeah, so... so sort of deal. But before that, the governor sends... Oh, he pissed me off. The governor sends Andrea to help Milton with an experiment. Right, this guy, old coffin dodger, he's going to die. He then does die. And basically, Milton's, like, doing this tea fucking trick, man, you see in that movie, Get Out with the whole hypnotist <laughs> shit. Horrendous stuff. Like, let's be real. See if see if Milton wasn't like, I wouldn't say he's a right hand man, like the left hand man of the governor, and he was like behind the Woodbury what our walls keep us safe. See if he wasn't behind those walls, this guy would not last. I mean, this guy'd be dead straight away. He as soon as the apocalypse started, he must have just bumped into the governor straight away. Same with Eugene. Yeah, yeah. Well, Eugene pretty much does come out and say that. He um he does you know he uh he, he lied to get himself with Seamus Seamus yeah. I can't remember his name Abraham Abraham I uh you know for protection and I wonder if there was a similar deal here with like Milton and the governor you know it does seem it's a bit like the same isn't it oh we need to protect Milton because he like Milton can try and find a cure or Milton can try and like figure it seems to be Milton and it, um, Eugene seemed to be the only. I would say Milton just didn't annoy me as much as Eugene. Every time I seen Eugene, I wanted to punch him in the face. Well, my my coordinates, my armor camp say Abraham. No, do you not, not agree with that? No, I agree, and that's why Glenn and Abraham did it multiple fucking times to his face. But uh, back to this scene, it's like the tie the guy doing. He's dead. He's trying to read out the same questions that he did just before his if death. If this is your wife, put your hand up. And then like Mel Melton, the fucking dip shit, right? Even if the hand thing works, why does he put his ear right beside his fucking <laughs> mouth? <laughs> then he sees his like fingers. He sees him. The, the zombies like grabbing the sheets and like rage, I guess, to try and attack him. But Melton mistakes this for trying to raise his hand. He's like, hey, if we if we release those straps, he can put his hand up. He goes to he releases the strap. So Walker goes to take a bite of his neck. Andrea. Puts it down with a knife, and uh, Milton kind of shits himself. And I, I think that's the last time we'll see Milton experiment with Walker. I think he's learned his lesson. Like, to me, this just doesn't make any sense. Like, why? Why the fuck? Is... I know you can say he's not had much exposure. But that's what I mean. Sort of Maybe he's been protected. Um, he's not had to deal with this. Probably. Like, I think he did say it was his first time seeing someone turn. So yeah, no. But should he not? Should he not, should he not be aware? Like, of what happens? Nah, but. <laughs> Yeah, I think there's a difference between being told. It's one of those things where I think you'd need to see it for yourself to. Anyway, for a guy that's smart, this was pretty fucking stupid. Can we agree on that? Aye, right, for a guy that's pretty intelligent, like, he just seems like a dick. And also, right, well, let's just go back to the prison camp here, because we actually seen it. 11 minutes into this episode, they're leaving to go to Woodbury. 11 minutes. And then, the funny thing about this is, they didn't trust any of these prisoners, yet they're taking one and leaving one to look after the fucking group. They're leaving Axel, a meth head, to look after a one-legged Herschel, Beth, Carl, the dishwasher, and a fucking kid. Great hey, episode six, episode seven. Yeah, episode seven. All right, okay, so Carl's been found. Well, that was last episode. Ah, but they didn't know that when the first film was shown. Rick hadn't seen her yet. He did. No, he didn't. He, he Rick didn't see her until Michonne. Because remember, Rick, Rick, Rick's talking to Michonne, and then he's like, "Hey, Rick, we got something for you." No, no, honestly, you're wrong. No, I'm right, mate. No, because they all go outside the gates after they're happy about Carl returning and they see Michelle. You sure? Yes, bet my life. So what's on Rick it. doing when they call him to see Carl? Taking a shit. <laughs> I think he was on the phone. Chris Tarn. <laughs> hey, he, he, he was waiting to, wait to see the answer of the 50 know, 50. Uh, or maybe, uh, I think you're right. Went to the audience. All right, so they managed, they got kind of. We've got who go out? We've got Rick, Michelle, and Daryl, and the black guy, Oscar. Oscar. Um, the, Oscar Pretorius. They, they take they, they take cover in some like fucking shut shed hut looking thing, like a house in the middle of the fucking forest. But there seems to be a guy living there. He's like, get out of my house! And the, the guy's crazed out. And he's like, I'm gonna phone the police. Rick's like, I am the police. I'm Rick Grimes. What the fuck? <laughs> like, <laughs> the guy's um, obviously not right in the head. The guy, so this, this does not help. Yeah, like the guy wants to phone the police, Rick says I am the police, he wants to see his badge, ID, Rick doesn't have it, so like Rick is going to pretend he's going to show it and try and restrain him I guess, but the guy manages to break free from Rick and Daryl, runs towards the door, 
and Michonne kills him. And, like, it's weird that we portray the governor as a bad guy. And I'm not saying he's not, like, because... But with, with the army people, you can see he's killing them for the resources and so that he doesn't want challenged. If you, that, I mean, that, and then that's why he's killing the other guy, because that, you could other, say the, that the, other guy might say, Wells him. might be like, no way, I'm sergeant, I outrank you, I'm, I'm in charge of Woodbury now, and the governor's just, he's the governor, he's not going to have that. But like, this is... End of the day, this guy and those guys, the armies, pose a threat, and Michonne dealt with it, and the governor dealt with it. Obviously, governors is worse, but at the end of the day, it's still killing people. I don't think Michonne was right here to kill this guy. No, neither do I. I could just fucking grab them and, back and, and no one really calls and no, it no, on the it. no, the thing is, right? There was a back door, the kid went out. And yeah, as soon as they kill him, it's weird. They fucking throw his body outside and let the walkers tear him apart, eat him, while they sneak out the back door. I mean, these walkers are slow, and we've seen by now in season three that they're already comfortable dealing with walkers. They could have just left out the back door. They could have. No, but yeah, Michonne kills a guy for no reason. Pointless. Right, back to Woodbury. We've got the three amigos outside discussing what to do. Um, the governor says, have you dealt with the, the farm girl yet? Merle's like... No, and then he's like, well, I'm going to die, brother. And then the Me Too movement is about to go in there. Governor rapes uh, Maggie here. <laughs> no, not really. Um, I think it's more of an intimidation thing. Like, you know, like, a, you know, you're going to start talking. I'm going to rape your ass. Trying to show his, like, superiority and shit like that. Because, I mean, if he wanted to, he could have done it. No, he didn't, so. So, like, I mean, no, that's not me. I, I'm not saying just a fact. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, like, I mean... Uh, My name is Brandon Tatum. But there, 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 there probably is. You no, know I mean it's like, <laughs> beat you're beating up Glenn. You don't really want to kill him, right? You're, you're more looking just for answers. So that beating him up is like a form of like interrogation. And I, and I, I think you could argue that's what the governor was trying to do here. But it's kind of it's different, right? It's, it's, as much as people want to say, oh, we're we're fifty fifty, right? And all all genders are equal and all that shit. They're they're not, right? And I think I actually I, I genuinely think more of the governor for pretend I, I mean this might sound weird but I actually don't think he's as bad for pretending he was going to rape Maggie than he would have been if he beat the shit out of Maggie like Meryl did Glenn I think that would have been worse I know people aren't going to see that like but yeah I get you I, I do get you I can see why he went with that tactic rather than the way what would we really think of the governor? I think I think what he did here probably is feud worse maybe by Glenn because he didn't really know what had happened. Yeah, I think Glenn's maybe well, like... Well, I guess like bite. a few punches would would have just been like, oh, a few punches. You're off the up. Good night. No, but what, 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 what was good, actually... Good scare tactic. Because at, at the start, the governor just wanted the information. Like, you know I mean? It's not like he says to, he walked in and says, Maggie, take your pants off. <laughs> I'm going like, to you. Um, but anyway, he gets his information. Yeah, but do you know, do you know what I mean? Like, he, I think it was more of an intimidation thing. Like... To show, like I said, to show his dominance and... I don't know. Uh, well, he, he, he got it the easiest way he did with foot spilling blood or going the extra mile. Would Glenn have been happier if he walked in and Maggie had two black eyes and the broken nose and fucking busted lip? No, I, 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 I for once agree with the fat man's logic here. <laughs> anyway, Governor though, pulls the gun on Glenn and then basically Maggie gives her up straight away. The weaker gender giving it up. What do you make of that? Yeah, um, again. It's like he points a gun. He pointed a gun at Maggie. No, he didn't. He pointed a gun. At... Who did he point the gun at? No, he pointed the gun at Glenn and Maggie gave. Yeah, he kind of had it at Maggie, but he never threatened her, but he was kind of pointing that. Then he pointed at the Glenn and she was like, oh, prison! Again, I think it's something where like, he wouldn't really he'd be more likely to shoot Glenn than he would Maggie. Yeah. Also, a funny thing was that uh, Glenn mentioned that they've got a big group and they said that they had Jim and Andrea and the Merle's like, oh, so you got Andrea, boy! But at the same time, like, I reckon if Glenn was in the room while the governor was going to like pretend and he was about to rape her, Glenn would have probably gave up the information as well. Absolutely. Um, even one punch, like, he probably would have fucking um, gave up, but yeah. It would just be weird. I don't think they would have got away with showing that. In TV, like the governor just like pure punching the shit out of Maggie, like you know, stuff like that doesn't normally get shown. Well, Clay did it at the jammer. Yeah, that was a one off kind of thing. Like, oh, one off. Uh, <laughs> Jack's beat up Ima. I was like, well, oh, I bitch deserved it, fuck. You could argue Maggie deserved it, withheld information from the governor. 
I wouldn't go that far, like me. <laughs> Woo! And anyway, uh, basically, Governor pulls me off, so I need to know where your loyalties lie, I say. Well, your brother, <laughs> with these boys. Who do I with? Why were you, Governor? You can just, you can just tell the Governor's like a, mili- a manipulating piece of shit. You know, like, I mean, he doesn't even know Mel's brother. We, Mel, we, d- we don't know the si- But here's the thing, right? Daryl is with them, but Meryl's not seen how he's bonded with the group. Yeah, it's for weird. all Meryl, for all Meryl knows, Daryl's as rebellious as, as he was in the first ep- first episode. It's like how does see to be honest, I'm even surprised that Daryl goes with Meryl. I know it's in a few episodes time, but I'm actually fucking surprised at that. Like, but like, it's in a straight way, the governor's like making it into a choice, making Meryl choose. So he's either your brother or Woodbury. I mean, why does it have to be a what? I, I just don't get it. Yeah, like. And another thing, like, what the fuck have they done? Like, what have Daryl's group done where Meryl needs to fucking pick or choose? I realise. It was Michonne that killed those people, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I don't. Like, and they don't even know that Michonne's with the prison group. So I, why the fuck does why why is the governor having to turn Meryl a, a, against Darrow in, in the prison group? When see, they this, done no, see at this point, Woodbury don't know about Michonne, right? So you could argue at this point, you could just call it even. Merle got revenge on Glenn because he laughed him, so to speak. Oh yeah, but that's the thing. Meryl's the one who should have the issue. It should be up to Meryl whether he's going to forgive them or not. What's the what? fucking governor? Having, hey, it's either your brother or, or us. I mean, what what what's, what's what is Rick's group done to the governor? I don't get. It's just a the, the, hum- I mean, he's just par hungry. The only thing you could argue they done was maybe Walter White terms. They are my territory. Did they take the baby formula out of the fucking governor's territory? Well, they took the prison that he wanted, and Merle said couldn't be done. Oh, I guess that makes sense. Then you know, wee bit. That where they want the prison, but again, why does he want the prison? Why all that risk for an area that like you don't really need? I guess the prison is more secure than Woodbury, but I think morale would be shit. Like, see the people in Woodbury, you can't tell me just living in the prison with bars and shit. And at least Woodbury looks like a nice little town. I think living in the prison would be, from a morale standpoint, you know, it'd be like a bit the prison's safer, but. But Woodbury's safe if you've got the, the, the people with guns on patrol and stuff. Exactly, like but when this whole conversation was being discussed, uh, Daryl and the gang are about to go into Woodbury. They're outside the gates and the episode ends. It's time to rate the episode out of ten. Um, I mean, pretty good. I, I, I thought it was alright. I'm going to get a seven. I'll give it a seven too. Uh, Merle. Merle is definitely carrying season three at this point. He is. I mean, I like the governor as well, but... Here, I didn't need the... What the fuck? The, the, the rest of Woodbury is pretty weak, like. I don't feel like there's a lot of character development. Martinez, Stupor. I mean, Milton gets some screen time. I thought Martinez was in it a lot more. Yeah, he's not. Maybe he's in it the he's second half of the season. better as a Calvaris. I think, he's, I think he's in it more second half of the season. Um, uh, fuck, who else have you got? Um, Haley. She's about to die. Um, I think she got like two scenes where she was training Andrea. How do shit with bows? It's just, yeah, it's just not a lot. It is what it is. Not a lot going on anyway. It's a 7 out of 10. Till next time. Peace.